Have you ever ruined a take with bumps like these? Most guitar players know how to palm mute, but few know the combination of other string muting secrets that pro players are using to silence any and all unnecessary string noise while playing up and down all six strings. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to combine the left and right hand muting through a technique I call rolling and go beyond palm muting so you can play sweeps, scales, and solos more cleanly than you ever thought possible. Without these tricks, you'll be stuck relying on fret wraps, editing, and recording 200 takes just to get a run you like. I speak from experience. There's nothing worse than feeling like you're about to finish a great take of a solo, only to bump one string and ruin the take completely. And here's a dirty secret of the guitar world. Fret wraps are a useful tool, but many pro players kind of look down on people who rely on them because it shows that that player hasn't actually learned to mute the strings properly. Now, many new players that teach are surprised at the difference in their playing and just how small the adjustments are that they need to make when I teach them these fundamental muting tricks and chances are you will be too. This video is part two in a series I'm doing on picking. Other videos are gonna cover sweeping, palm muting, funk strumming, guitar setup, and more. So go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons if you wanna see when those come out. And if you haven't watched the first video in this series yet, it's all about how to hold the pick and position your guitar and wrist properly. If you've got any of those ingredients wrong, you won't be able to apply the techniques I talk about in this video. So go ahead and watch that one first. First up, I wanna go over some examples of the exact kind of bumps that this kind of muting will help you eliminate from your playing. I let little slips like these go for years until I trained my ear to even detect them. Then it took even more time to train my hands to never allow it. These are extremely small slips, but when you're recording dual channel guitars or an isolated solo, stuff like this adds up and ruins the musical effect. The first example is from the solo from On the Backs of Angels by Dream Theater. Check out this sweep. Did you hear any of the open strings ring? It becomes especially obvious when I mute the primary string that I'm playing. Listen again. Now listen to it with the techniques that I'm gonna teach you. Do you hear how there's not as much mud on the top end? Do you hear the improved clarity with the lowest notes on the sweeps? By the way, this works whether you're playing sweeps or on any passage that has string crossing. Sweeps are just a really good example to demonstrate all these techniques on. So how do we fix this? How do we apply all these techniques I'm talking about? Well, the secret lies in combining a few different muting techniques all at once to keep the strings quiet. First up, as I play down the strings from high to low, look at how my first finger flattens out from being more on top of the string to being more flattened out. I'm using my first finger or my left hand fingers to keep the top strings quiet. Second, I'm using the rolling technique and changing the angle of my hand to open up or clamp down on the lower strings as I play down the strings and back up. With my left hand muting the top strings and my right hand muting the lower strings, I'm effectively creating a single lane for the notes that I do want to play to ring in. So let's break down how I'm actually doing these movements. First up, the right hand. So this is where I'm gonna introduce you to the rolling technique. If you're already familiar with palm muting, this is similar, but I'm gonna throw a vocab word at you. And that vocab word is hypothenar. I find the term palm to be confusing because it technically refers to the entire inside surface of your hand. And this lack of specificity has led to some players using the underside of their thumb, also called the thenar, to affect muting. Trying to use the underside of your thumb to palm mute completely displaces the hand and limits the ability to play fast and mute properly. String muting should come from the hypothenar, this outside area of your hand, and this will be a natural result if your hand is in the neutral position that we talked about in part one in this picking series. With the vocab out of the way, I can now explain rolling. Rolling is a technique where we use this hypothenar area of the hand to actively mute any and all strings below the one we're playing. Now I get it, that's nothing particularly new, but here's what it is. You're gonna affect this motion by rotating the wrist or flexing, which is moving down, on the strings as you play upwards and open up as you play the lower strings. Here's a close-up example of what my palm is doing in a couple different scenarios. A 
lot of people I teach are surprised at just how small the distance is. Like I've said before, guitar is an instrument of very tight tolerances. The total space a string takes up when it's actually vibrating, I measured, is actually only around 1.6 millimeters. So you only need a very small amount of movement with the hand to affect this rolling technique. And by the way, bending a string, especially upwards, affects the how you will apply the rolling technique. So when you're bending that upwards, make sure you don't chop it off. Now, if you want a little exercise to try this out on, just try playing a scale across all six strings. Notice especially how your hand has to lift or open up as you descend the scale. The muting as you're ascending the scale is gonna happen a little more naturally. And that's really it when it comes to how you apply rolling. Rolling is for covering any strings that are below the string that you're actively playing. Now, before we go on to the left hand, it's also worth mentioning that depending on what exactly you're playing, you can also use the loose fingers of the right hand to mute the strings as well. I don't tend to use this very much because there's a decent risk for creating accidental string noise when you just lift those fingers off the strings. But it is great for the last note of a solo that ends on any of the inside strings like A, D, G, or B. also worth clarifying where the thenar part of the hand should be allowed to touch down, and this will depend somewhat on your guitar. Like I showed in part one, guitars can have wildly different pickup heights, which can really affect the flexion or extension of the hand, and that can affect where this part of your hand goes. Trying to float the thenar will be uncomfortable, but using it to try to mute also doesn't work. So here's what to do. I allow the thenar to rest on the body of the guitar and move in this area that's just above the low E string. As you move up to higher strings, it's completely fine if this part comes to rest on some of the low strings, as long as it's not adding any noise. In fact, that kind of motion is almost essential. And the way to execute this movement of the hand position is by simply opening the elbow up or pushing down. It's a very small movement, but it's good to have a specific plan for what you're gonna do and where you're gonna make this movement. For me, I look at making that shift from being on the body to on top of the strings whenever I'm crossing over from playing the G string up to the B string and E string. So here's what it looks like when I play a six string scale. So now that we've covered how to mute the strings below the string you're playing, you're probably wondering, but how do we cover strings above the string that we're playing? And that's where the left hand comes in. One of my teachers told me that Paul Gilbert has this exercise or thing where you should be able to play any of the frets or strings while only sounding one note. And this little demo is a perfect case study for what we're going to be doing here. Let's check it out. And this is pretty much the same kind of technique that we're going to be using for the high strings. We're going to be using our first finger to mute any of the higher strings that we're playing. And yes, I know there's a little bit of string noise when you play across all the strings, but if you're intentionally picking just one string, you can be very sure that the others aren't going to be ringing out in any meaningful way. Now, depending on what exactly you're playing, the first finger might be the finger that you're using to play what you're playing. That's where you've got to use your brain and combine these techniques and maybe work out an alternate fingering or play on a different string or something like that. If you're playing on one of those inside strings, you can optionally flatten out the first finger as you're playing and use this inside part to mute the higher strings. So here's an example of that. So take note of how the finger plays at the tip when I'm playing at the top of the sweep and becomes flattened out as I progress. If you want a demo exercise for this one, just try playing any five or six string sweep pattern starting from the top. Whether you're using left hand muting or rolling or a combination of the two is going to be completely dependent on what you're playing. Runaway strings, like I said, will practically ruin any musical phrases or recording takes. So it's worth being very strict about not letting any other strings ring, even if you're just doing your warmups. Encode these motions into your daily guitar warmups and you'll be very happy with your increased control over the instrument. While we're on the left hand, there's one more quick tip I wanna give you that can help you reduce string noise. And that is make sure you're not pressing down exceptionally hard on the strings or accidentally giving the strings a light pluck when you release like you do with a pull-off. Pressing too hard can kinda of cause the fingers to stick slightly or 
quickly lifting up can also cause the string to be set into vibration. Obviously, plucking is going to cause the worst part of this issue. So my advice here is simply don't do it. <laughs> and the other advice is to experiment with this little exercise from Rick Graham. Starting on a clean tone, start picking an open string and then slowly start pressing down until you barely have enough pressure to fret the note without buzzing. And what you'll come to find is that it really doesn't take very much pressure to play your guitar at all. Now let's go over a bonus technique that will really help you clean up string noise and that I haven't seen anyone else talk about. And that is something I call thumb dragging. So should you choose to learn this, because I know professional players who specifically have not trained this out of their playing because they just don't think it's that big of a deal, and that's fine, but I'd rather just be that 1% better. So thumb dragging is where you allow this first joint to drag along the lower string. So here's an example playing with thumb dragging. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the pick out of my hand, and I'm gonna put this hand in the picking position. I'm just gonna move that side of my thumb across the strings. It's kind of hard for me to do, actually. And that is all the extra noise that you're making by allowing your thumb to drag. So the way to fix that is to just make sure that you have just enough pick extended out of the picking hand. And then for me, it came down to just kind of almost rotating the thumb a little bit more into my hand or maybe just turning the wrist a little bit. I worked on this quite a while ago, but if I point it out, uh, it's a pretty easy change to make. It's a small change and uh, you should be able to kind of figure out what will work best for you. There's not really a particular muscle movement that you can make there that is going to completely ruin the rest of your right hand technique. So don't get too technical about like, well, should I do this or rotate that? Do something that feels comfortable, keeps your hand in neutral position and doesn't cause any muscles to be flexed in particular. And I know that side of the thumb can be useful for getting a sense of what string you're on, but it's not really necessary. There's other ways to tell which strings you're on. And like I showed you, it can easily contribute to that extra grinding and shifting noise when you're playing. For me, I'd rather take it out and just be sure that I'm not making the extra noise. So today we went over the rolling technique with the right hand, which is where you use the, specifically the hypothenar area of your palm to mute any strings below the one you're playing. We went over the exact placement of the thenar, which is right here above the low E string, and where to put it on the guitar body and how it moves across these strings. And we also went over the technique for left hand muting. Finally, we covered how thumb dragging can add extra noise to your playing. And if this has helped you, if this has helped clean up your playing, I'd love for you to let me know in the comments. If you're not subscribed yet, hit the button. So number one, I know you like these videos and more people can see them and you'll get notified when the next video in the series comes out. If you have any additional questions or comments, stuff that you'd like to see me address, just let me know below. And I like reading all those, it's really fun. All right, that's all I got for today. So peace and I'll see you in the next one.